So an 18th century French poet once said, in the end, there is only one tragedy in life, not to have been a saint. So my brothers and sisters, when all is said and done, the only question that really matters in our earthly lives is whether we are going to be a saint or not. Now, that second reading, St. John tells us what a saint is. He says, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, to be a saint is to see God and to be like God. Now, those who are presently, at this very instant, before the face of God, the saints, are enjoying eternal peace, eternal joy, sharing in the fullness of God's love, right? the divine life of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so that should encourage us to want the same because we are made for that happiness. We are made for eternal happiness. And I, I think this feast is so important to remind us of that. Right? Yes, we are honoring the saints, celebrating the gift that God has given to all and countless men, women, and children throughout the ages uh, to have them before his face, to, to share in his divine life. But that is why each and every human person is made. And so God, in his mercy and his love, has given us everything we need to see him, to know him. We can even see him now in our earthly pilgrimage, not in the same way, not directly, like the saints are doing now in heaven, but we can have some, some vision of, of God, and that has been our parish theme for the year 2020, they shall see God. And so we, see, we seek to see God in order to reach and achieve that heavenly destiny, that eternal happiness, that blessedness that we are made for. Now, all the blessings, all the good that we have in our lives comes from God. And the greatest among the gifts that God has given us is the gift of our Catholic faith. And with this supernatural gift, we have the light. In order to see, we need light, right? And that's what we have in the Catholic faith is the light of truth so that we can see God. And we also then have the capacity that we have been reborn through the waters of baptism and sharing in, in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection to be an adopted child of God, to, to be able to live the graces that God continuously is showering upon us to transform us into his divine love, to fulfill the command, as we heard last week, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Now God, in addition to giving us the gift of our faith, has given us the gift of our beautiful parish. Where this gift of faith is strengthened, is nurtured, and is exercised. It is through the parish that we receive what we need. We, the parish has everything we need, our beautiful parish has everything we need to be able to reach our potential, to be transformed into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be transformed into the saints that we are called to be. Now in the Sermon on the Mount, we just heard the opening of the Sermon on the Mount in today's Gospel, Jesus tells us what is necessary to be a saint that in each of these nine declarations, our Lord proclaims what it is to be blessed. Blessed, and way that we can describe it in our own time, in our own language, is to be happy. But not just feeling happiness, but real happiness. What we would say objective happiness, to be filled, to be perfect, to be complete to be made whole. And so we have 
these declarations our Lord has given us, these beatitudes, to become like him. Right? That's our whole goal, is to be like Christ. And to become then, of course, the saints that, that he has suffered for us to be. Right? He suffered and died so that we could have that blessedness. And in our parish life, that is what we do by God's grace and the intercession of our patron, St. Joseph, the universal patron of the church, and all the saints, that we are helping each other to reach that blessedness, helping each other as a parish. And so our parish is a place where we receive what we need and supporting one another to rejoice and be glad, to rejoice and be glad in Christ. Now our parish is where we learn how to become poor in spirit, right? That have that poverty, that detachment from the worldly things, the material goods of the world, the pleasures of the world, uh, the honors of the world, to know that our true happiness in, it lies in our union with God, with Christ. That we have that poverty of spirit. We learn here how we are to support and comfort each other in our mourning, in our grief, in our suffering, in our sadness that we will all experience in this earthly life, the, va the veil of tears or the valley of tears. It's in the parish that we become meek, understanding that we owe everything to God, right? That our egos are, are transformed, our pride is, is, is uh, removed, and that we have that humility to recognize our absolute dependence in every instance upon God's grace. It's in the parish that we hunger and thirst for righteousness, to know that every human person from the moment of conception to natural death is made in the image and likeness of God and called to share in that divine life and that we work for that righteousness. We are a witness to uh, the truth of the goodness and the value and dignity of every human person. It is in the parish that we receive the mercy of God so that we can then be merciful. It is in the parish that we learn to experience peace, that we experience Christ's peace because he is present. The Prince of Peace is with us. And in every Mass, he says, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you, so that we can become the peacemakers that God wants us to be, to, to, to be that light to others. And it's in the parish that we're given the grace to have that clean heart so that we can see God. We need that clean heart to see God. It's in the parish that we are um, helping one another in the times of real trial and persecution. Right? We're persecuted for the sake of righteousness, that we're all in this together. And yes, the world is against the church. Right? We see so many threats against the church, not just now, but throughout her entire history since Jesus founded her, that she's always been uh, opposed by the world, by evil forces, uh, but we are together supporting one another, being insulted and persecuted and having every kind of evil uttered against us falsely because of Jesus. That we come here and find each other uh, to um, encourage and to hold up one another in the midst of the world's attacks. Uh, and of course, in the parish, we have the sacraments. It's through the parish we receive the gifts of the sacraments to receive the grace that we need, that supernatural grace to see God and to be like him, to intimately know our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the gift of the sacrifice of the mass in our worship where we see God. We are so privileged to be part of what we heard about in that first reading from the book of Revelation, the heavenly liturgy that goes on continuously, that we are swept up in that in every Mass to praise God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, to give thanks for all the gifts that he's given us with all the saints and angels, that we are this mystical moment. We're also present at the sacrifice of the cross to learn how we are to give of ourselves as Christ gave of himself. 
We're standing with the Blessed Mother and all the saints around the cross and offering that one sacrifice that Christ made of himself to save us. That salvation comes from the Lamb and to save the world. And of course, here in the parish, we experience the true presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist being fed with his body and blood so we can have his eternal life. As he says in John chapter 6, that we must eat his flesh and we must drink his blood to have that life, to be transformed more and more into him. And we have here in the parish a sacrament of confession very frequently offered six days a week where we experience God's forgiveness of our sins, our many sins, uh, no matter how bad, that he wipes them away in the blood, in his blood. And that then we can forgive others and not have to hold grudges and to have true peace. It's here in the parish that we hear the gospel proclaimed, that we hear the truth, and we are formed by God's word to live as his children. That God has revealed himself. He has shown himself through scripture, through the sacred tradition, through the magisterium, the teaching of the church. And in our many, many ministries that we have dedicated to our faith formation, to build up our faith, to understand more fully the truth that God has revealed in our Catholic faith, and to be able to live that truth out and to be witnesses of the truth in a world that so desperately needs to see the truth, to be that light of the world. When in our parish is where we are so blessed to have our beautiful uh, Adoration Chapel where Jesus is they're waiting for us to come to spend time with him, to find a moment of peace with him, to have him look at us and us look at him. We're so uh, blessed to have the gift of the many devotions that we promote and encourage in our parish, and so many of you participate, particularly the rosary. Uh, in our parish, we have so many opportunities to exercise and perform the spiritual corp uh, spiritual and corporal works of mercy, right, to help those that are in need, in material need, to feed the poor, to give thirst, thirsty to the drink, uh, to visit the sick, to uh, comfort those who are mourning, to instruct those who are uh, in need of instruction and to lead them into that union or into that relationship with Christ. And we have so many ministries that are dedicated to carrying out the work um, of the gospel, right? The mission of the gospel. So my brothers and sisters, today I'm asking for your continued help. The help that I need and our, my brother priests need to make and continue to fulfill our role as a parish, the role that Jesus has entrusted to us uh, to uh, make saints to make saints. That's what we're doing here. That's the whole point of the parish. That's why Jesus has given us everything is so that we can have eternal happiness and joy. And so I need each of our families. I need each of our families to participate in one way to help make our, our parish again together, make our parish a place where saints are formed. Uh, and so we are called to use the tremendous gifts that God has given each of us individually and as a parish in service uh, to the mission that we are called to carry out. And so we have the gift of prayer. We have the gift of service. We have the gift of uh, generosity to help us grow together as a parish, to be renewed, especially in this time that we have suffered these several, the, since March, the, the whole pandemic and everything that we have gone through uh, and all the changes that, that we've experienced and have our world up, turned upside down, uh, but that together we, we are looking forward to the future. We're very uh, positive, very optimistic, very hopeful, that's a better word, hopeful about our parish life and how together we can renew our parish and grow from this. Uh, grow in our faith, and it, we've already seen many fruits of that. It's so wonderful to see uh, people coming back to Mass, even though there are these restrictions and there's this inconvenience of having to wear the mask. Many people, that the 300 people this morning that came out in kind of in a colder morning uh, to see, hear Mass outside, um, those who, uh, all of our many stewards, and so I'm so grateful for our sacristans, our lectors, our, our um, ushers, 
our ushers that, that, that really have dedicated themselves, uh, and uh, all of our stewards that have done just a tremendous job uh, in adjusting to all of the changes. Uh, but we together all can help renew our parish, that we together in our Lord Jesus Christ can rejoice and be glad. So to commit to the parish and recommit to the mission of the parish where uh, saints are made, uh, we are asked to now participate. So I'm asking all of our families to participate in our annual stewardship renewal. Now you can find uh, this renewal, um, which many of you may remember from years past, is done typically in person. But this year, we're not going to hand you out any sort of a renewal form. You can obtain that online through our parish website, stjmod.com. And there's a, there's a, a very clear um, section on the, on the front page, on the home page, where you click. And you'll then be put into this form where you fill out your registration, or you fill out your name, um, contact information, address, and then you get to select how you will participate. And again, everyone can participate in this. Because the first thing is prayer, is to pray gratefully. So that means praying in your domestic churches at home, praying uh, together as a family, praying the rosary daily, making the commitment to do that, or weekly, or, or however often you can commit to that, coming to Mass on Sundays. And now that we have Mass in person, to, to come, come to Mass. I know it's inconvenient, you have to register, uh, but to do that and to remember that we have all this, the protocols in place, as you know, uh, to minimize any possible transmission of the coronavirus, uh, but to also think about, since we opened back up for Masses at the end of May, I try to calculate this, it's a, it's a little hard to get the final numbers, but I've estimated that there are 25,000 25,000 at least people that have come to our masses, outdoors, indoors, um, and that's not counting the people that are, are online, and received communion, many of them, probably over 20,000 received communion, and we have not had one report of anybody getting sick by coming to the church, coming to mass. And so just to keep that in mind, so to commit to the mass, attending the mass, um, and then there's uh, also the other options of um, helping with different ministries. We have our spiritual ministries, the spiritual stewardship, the different prayer groups that we have. So we are blessed to have a number of prayer groups. You can see that on the list uh, as you go down the list. Um, also, another thing you can commit to in terms of the spiritual, again, everybody can participate in this, is, is things like picking up the Bible and reading sacred scripture, uh, attending um, uh, or going to confession frequently, coming and spending time in the Adoration Chapel. So that is so important. Um, we also have liturgical stewardship, and we are in need of ushers. So those that uh, maybe feel called to serve, that is another way you can serve. We also have many other op opportunities. Uh, we do have greeters and lectors and uh, sacristans. Um, we also have faith formation opportunities that uh, we're starting up again, our faith formation in person for adult faith formation. Uh, this month, you'll hear an announcement about that at the end of Mass, uh, but those, those are other opportunities. And then the community life, to help build up the community life, and we are trying to get back to more in-person services, although many of these right now are still done online, but there's a list of those. Uh, to help with our youth is another um, very big area that we want uh, to encourage people to consider, and there's some options for that. And our outreach ministries um, that we do, um, and, and that includes our pantry now, our, uh, which is formerly known as St. Vincent de Paul. Um, the new name is STJMOD, Pantry and Helpline, to help those that are in material need. Uh, and then also, uh, we are asking you to consider what you can contribute financially to the parish. And I have to say that I am so grateful to all of you who have been contributing throughout this time. Uh, that we've not been able to meet in person in mass and the many who are still at home that are contributing so thank you so much uh, because you have helped us so greatly to get through this but we need to recommit to look at what we can give and if you have not been able to give to consider even just to give something every week to make a contribution weekly uh, or, or monthly to do that electronically 
If you don't know how, please call the office because that is very helpful for us to kind of plan for our future and our budgeting. So please, uh, if you haven't signed up for electronic giving, to really think about that. And certainly it's much easier because we're not able to pass the basket around at the masses. Uh, and I know the people at home are, have been doing that, have been giving. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Uh, but if you need some help, please, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. So again, um, I'm asking you to go online when you get home. Those that are at home right now, please don't do it right now during the mass, but after mass, uh, to go to the stjmod.com. Look for the, the faith, as it just says the word faith, and it says click on the stewardship renewal, so the annual stewardship renewal, and then you can just spend about 10 minutes to fill this out. Um, but before you do that, really think about it. Maybe say some prayer just before the Lord and say, please help me, Lord, to see how I can support my parish, to support in growing the parish, um, and renewing the parish in this time, uh, to be able to uh, help the mission to form saints for my family to become saints, but also everybody who comes to the parish to really encounter Jesus, to know him truly present in the Holy Eucharist, to know his forgiveness, to know his peace in this difficult time, and to find uh, a place from the world, the craziness of the world, to rejoice and be glad.